Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This lesson is going to look at uh, non-discounted profitability criteria for project evaluation, and it is intended for our chemical engineering economics course. Again, I'm putting this at the beginning just so that you can come back and refer to this if you ever forget what any of these little symbols stand for. In our last lesson, we looked at a typical cash flow diagram where we begin by purchasing land, building the thing, and we go all the way through to the end of the life of the project where we're going to salvage uh, our equipment, sell back our land, and recover our working capital that we had deposited at the beginning of the time. We want to now begin analyzing this. So there are several profitability metrics. Basically, there are three bases that are used, time, cash, or interest rate. And you can do any of these three in either non-discounted ways or discounted ways. Now, non-discounted ways are generally not a good idea, but sometimes we use them anyway for small projects or just little process improvements where it's not worth a lot of time to do the calculations. And if the values that we get are very different, the decisions that we make based on the non-discounted techniques will probably be the same as we would get for our discounted for a lot less effort. Discounted methods are definitely better because they include the time value of money. In this lesson, we're looking st strictly at the non-discounted techniques. So the first of these is the payback period. So it's a non-discounted technique that's time-based. So the payback period is the time required after startup for you to recover the fixed capital investment without the land for the project. And the reason it's only for that portion is because you're going to get the land back at the end. You can sell the land and it should not have lost value. Now, when you're looking at payback period, you want to have a shorter time, right? So a smaller value for payback period is going to be the better choice. We also can talk about the cumulative cash position. Now, this is a cash-based criterion and it's non-discounted. So the cumulative cash position is the worth of the project at the end of the project life. So you simply are going to add up all of your positive and negative cash flows and you see what the answer is. That's your cumulative cash position. The difficulty with using this is that it depends on the size of the project. And so if you're comparing two options, and one only cost you $10, another one cost you $10,000, it's going to be a little bit difficult to compare the two. So we frequently instead use for cash-based analysis the cumulative cash ratio. This is going to be the sum of all of the positive cash flows divided by the sum of the absolute value of all the negative cash flows. So if you looked at the math, you could see that you would get some cancellation. And we end up that it's 1 plus the cumulative cash position. That's really easy to do. You just kind of run, do a running total divided by the cost of the land, the working capital, and the fixed capital investment without the land. Now, whenever this value is greater than 1, the project is potentially uh, profitable, and if it's less than one, the project is potentially not profitable. Now, that means that when you're doing this, the cumulative cash position is going to be the one that determines the sign. Now, the rate of return on investment is the interest rate-based metric for non-discounted techniques. It is <sighs> calculated as the average annual net profit over the life of the plant once you've done startup. So you don't have to include those years of construction. And then you divide that by the fixed capital investment without the land again, because you'll recover that. Now in this case, you do want a larger rate of return, okay, to be a better investment. 
So using the example out of the Turton textbook, they show you exactly what these things mean in terms of the diagram. So this is the diagram that we had from the previous video. And we start up our plant at roughly year two, okay, where we have our working capital investment. If you want to know what the payback period is, well, you're looking for where this height for fixed capital investment is recovered. So when do you get back up that high above? So you're still minus the land, minus the working capital. You'll, you're not to the value of zero. You're to the value that you can recover, the land and the working capital. And when you get to that point, okay, that's going to be your payback period. It's going to be measured in time, so two to five, so that's a three-year payback period in this example. If you want to know what the cumulative cash position is, you just simply look at the very last arrow, because this was a cumulative cash flow diagram, and you read that number off, and that's your cumulative cash position. The CCR, you're going to take this plus, you're going to take the land plus working capital plus first fixed capital investment without the land. So it means you're going to divide by this number right here. Okay, so we're going to take this divided by the absolute value of this, add that to one, and that's going to be our cumulative cash ratio. And here it looks like it's um, not all that different from one. Uh, probably it should be maybe a little bit larger than one here. So you'd get something on the order of two-ish. Finally, the rate of return on investment. So you're taking the average annual net profit and divided by the fixed capital investment. Well, if you run the formula for slope uh, or for the equation of this line from where you start to where you end and salvage your material, now notice the salvage goes in here because we have not counted for that here. So this is extra money I'm getting at the end. So we go to where we've salvaged the material and just run a straight line from there to there and write the equation of the line. You're going to find that that's going to give you an average annual net profit kind of built in there. You can play with the algebra. It's not really all that difficult to do. Uh, and you get the slope of the line minus 1 over n. So this is another example out of the textbook. And so they look at, they say the cost of the land was 10 million, so they're putting some numbers to this problem. 150 million is their total fixed capital investment without land. They are doing it split into two years, 90 million the first, 60 million the second. They start up at the end of the second year with a working capital of 30 million. And their annual startup for the first years is going to be $75 million per year. Cost of manufacturing, uh, including depreciation allowance, is going to be $30 million per year. Tax rate, salvage, salvage value. They're depreciating over five years with a project life of 10 years. Okay. So they just simply draw what those numbers are. Okay. And they're drawing them, in this case, scaled. And you can also do these on a spreadsheet and just do running totals to find out specifically what these numbers are. But when they do that, they find a payback period of 3.85 years. Again, remember, you're not going to a value of zero. You're going to where you've recovered all but the land and the working capital. And then they found that the ca cumulative cash position was 170.5 million. Their uh, rate of return on investment was 32.05. Okay, that's the slope of this line. Uh, over 150 minus 1 tenth. And so they get an 11% return on investment. Oh, and the cumulative cash ratio, so 1 plus this 170.5 divided by the value at this point, which was 190, and they get 1.9. So this is 
what these sorts of problems can look at, like. But again, remember that this doesn't include discounting. During this 12 years of this project, 10 year life of operation plus two years of construction time, you could have just set that money in a bank and let it grow. Was that going to be more valuable than doing this investment? Which is why we look at discounted techniques and those will be in the next video. Thank you very much for your time.